Now, my next guest was just 16 when he contracted HIV after his first sexual experience and for 15 years, actor Nathaniel Hall kept his diagnosis a secret from friends and family. But now, well, he's one of the stars of groundbreaking TV drama, It's a Sin. Follows the lives of gay men and their friends during the AIDS crisis of the 80s. Nathaniel joins me now. That was a really moving scene because that's when he realises that your character's not well, he's got the, leg the legions and he knows he's not, the legions, legions, I can't even speak. He's not well. I'm so <laughs> yeah, excited to talk to you. <laughs> this was... Sarcoma lesion, yeah. Yeah, this was so groundbreaking and it's informed so many people. What a wonderful, wonderful thing to be part of. Oh, do you know what, what an honour, like I think when we were making it, you know, it's a Russell T Davis production, you know it's going to be special and you know it's going to make waves in, in the LGBT community particularly, but we just, I don't think we, any of us could have expected the reaction that we've had and it, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's completely overwhelming. And especially for you as well, because you've got HIV yourself, you're living with HIV and um, as we said, you, you, you got it very young and for a while, for a long while, you didn't tell anybody, um, but eventually, eventually you did and I wonder how that was growing up, knowing you had that knowledge, but you just didn't want to tell anyone? Yeah, I mean, what I say to people is, you know, I've got I've got a really good relationship with my family. You know, I came out at 16 as gay. They've been very supportive. Um, and um, I think what that demonstrates to people is the power of the shame and the stigma surrounding HIV. You know, it's probably the most stigmatised disease in the world. Um, and so even though we're really, really close, I just I just really struggled to, to say this thing. There was a lot of shame that I was carrying, you know, and a lot of self-stigmatisation as well. And it took me 15 years and actually for me to realise that, that the diagnosis, whilst I'm, I'm healthy physically, was really impacting me, uh, my, my mental well-being. And it was at that point when I decided that I wanted to tell my family and, and go more public with what, with what I was living with. And the reaction was, was, was fine. Yeah, 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 actually, do you know, the, the reaction was really underwhelming. Um, <laughs> so I sent, I wrote a letter to my mum and dad and to my siblings as well. I've got three siblings. Um, and, you know, I got a few text messages and my mum came over the next day and we had a little chat. Um, and my sis, I know my sister will text me after this because after every interview I do, she says, sorry for the underwhelming response. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? In a way, that's actually quite nice. It's quite, it's quite comforting in many ways. And of course now, like I said, you're living with HIV on medication. You're absolutely fine. Um, you've got a, a relationship and the two of you have got a perfectly healthy, normal relationship. Very, very happy and there you are. Isn't that incredible? It's wonderful <laughs> it, that we've got... It is. That you, you know, you can take a tablet and you're, and you're okay. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, uh, I actually found lockdown love like your last guest. So me and Sean met during during the lockdown, uh, and yeah, and I'm 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 on medication, and my viral load is what's known as undetectable. So that means I can't transmit the virus on. So uh, my partner Sean remains um, HIV negative, and he also takes HIV medication, which can help him from preemptively getting HIV. So it's fantastic. And if you'd said to me at 16 that that was going to be the case when I was in my 30s, you know, I, I wouldn't have believed you. So it's phenomenal how far we've come. But I think doing the show, what I, what, what laid, sat really heavy with me was just how lucky I was. You know, I was about, I was diagnosed about seven years into effective medication. So, you know, I look at some of the characters in that show and think, gosh, if I'd been born a few years earlier, uh, my life could have been very, very different. So, yeah. That's really true. That's a very, very good way to look upon it. And of course, you turned your experience into this fantastic show. You know, you put it out there on the stage and it just so happened that some producers saw you and then you ended up getting casted in It's a Sin. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. incredible? It's just wonderful the way things work out. It is, yeah. And you know what? For a very long time, you know, the, the, the shame of the diagnosis had impacted my career as well because, you know, it, I, I was suffering from generalised anxiety disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder. And actually, when I when I decided to flip the script and, you know, and say, I'm not ashamed of this thing anymore. I'm going to say it out loud. I mean, I'm not saying to everyone that they need to get up on stage, you know, and perform that they've got, you know, their, their own trauma and stuff. But for me, something magical happened when I made first time my show um, and we took it to the Edinburgh Fringe and it was so well received and it was completely overwhelming um, but I think lots of people yeah when you live authentically I think people latch on to that and then yeah. Um, yeah the producers saw saw my show invited me to audition for It's a Sin and here we are. And here it is isn't that amazing it really is you've got to you should write a book as well because it's been a remarkable thing because you know what what we need to do now and I think this show has really helped with that is everybody needs to get tested you know, that's the thing, an awful lot of people, especially young people, 
aren't getting tested and they, and they just, they need to. You know, we can't yeah. get complacent just because you can live a normal life with HIV and um, you should get tested so that you can, so that you can get the medication yeah. and live that yeah. normal life. Yeah, because if you don't get tested, you know, HIV will will lead to you getting very sick and it will kill you. And of, of course, if you don't know you've got HIV, you might unwittingly pass it on to someone and no one wants to do that. So getting tested is really, really important. Um, and, you know, last week was National HIV Testing Week um, and the show has had such an amazing impact. And the, on the Monday last week, uh, there was 8,200 tests booked through freetesting.hiv. Wow. And that's just one service, you know. So if that's reflective of uh, UK wide, yeah. that is in a phenomenal uptake of testing and that's fantastic so the the aim is to end all new transmissions of hiv by 2030 in the uk so that means if you're sexually active you should be getting tested once every six to 12 months and it's so easy these days via a postal kit not like you see in it's a sin you know where, with a six week wait oh, um horrible, it, yeah so it's really really easy and look you know I always say to people, HIV is not something you want to go out shopping for. You know, I think my life would be easy without it, but mm -hmm. I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm going to lead a long, a long, long life, just like everyone else. So, yeah, get good people around you, get the support and get that test booked. Yeah, that's that. you could see that in its sin as well, isn't it? That community, you know, everybody looking out for one another and, and taking care of one another. I think that came across incredibly strongly. And that we're seeing the scene now where everybody was watching the adverts. I remember these adverts. Yeah. It just terrified the life out of everyone and actually didn't do any good at all. Um, and there's still, there is still stigma around, around a HIV and AIDS, not as much as there was, but programmes like this and you doing your show and you talking to me helps, you know, it just helps. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things I was worried about with the, with It's a Sin was that, you know, it, it, it very much focuses on the gay version of the story. You know, over 50% living with HIV in the UK are heterosexual. Um, and also it had sort of the history of HIV. So, you know, people not knowing how it was transmitted, scrubbing cups, cleaning themselves in the shower. And I was worried that, that we might see some of those attitudes resurface. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually what's happened is the complete opposite. Like all of a sudden, everyone's talking about HIV and all the amazing charities up and down the country and, and HIV activists have jumped on this moment, this national conversation and gone, HIV has changed. Here's what you need to know. And here's how we can end HIV for good in the UK. So it just shows you the phenomenal impact that like a, a TV drama can have on something like this. It does. I cannot wait to see what you do next. I'm, I'm waiting for it because it, it was for all of you. It was remarkable. It's been a, a breakout show for all of you. And thank you. Thank you oh, for thank such you an so authentic for portrayal. Me. And it's been a joy to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Thank you. And It's a Sin continues tomorrow, Channel 4 at 9 o'clock. Or you can do what I did and watch the whole thing in one sitting. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations, and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.